Hello and welcome to the Storage Commander Network. This is going to be a brief beginner tutorial on how to set up an existing contract after a conversion using the Storage Commander software. You should have had your customer data brought over from your old software package, so in order to start accessing this information and attaching them to their current units, all you have to do is simply go to Activities at the top of the screen and go down to Set Up Existing Contract. This will bring up all of your available units within Storage Commander. Once you're inside the Setup Existing Contract window, it's time to start setting up your units. You can either scroll down the Available Units screen to actually choose whichever unit you want, or you can simply use the search bar located in the upper right of the window. From here you can type in any unit number and it'll bring it up. For this example I'm going to choose Unit 98 and I'm going to continue to Customer Information tab. Since we're setting up an existing contract and not actually putting in new information, we're going to use the button located in the upper right portion of the window that says Existing Customer. From here, this will show all of your current rented customers, which for this example, we want to use the ones that are in the database and put them into their units. So we're going to go to Show Inactive. So right now I'm going to pick on Brandon Carraway and bring him into Unit 98. So as you can see, it populates all of this information, including the address, the phone number, and everything that you want. If you did get any other new information, you can feel free to put it in at this time, such as email address or anything else. Once you're done with that, you can continue on to the Photos tab. The Photos tab will allow you to import pictures to be used on the graphical sitemap from your previous software or directly from your computer. If your facility is utilizing the biometric fingerprint scanner to gather customer fingerprint information, you can continue to the next tab. If your facility is not, you may continue to alternate contacts. I just want to take a brief moment and explain that the alternate contacts, employer, and customer information screens are all the same. So I'm actually just going to skip over those and go directly to the notes and comments tab. From here you can start putting in information that you might have had in your previous software that might be pertaining to each individual contract. The notes section can be edited by any person at any time, while the comments section will be in their date and time stamped along with the user who put that in. The alerts are useful information in order to write things that you might want to see present upon opening this particular contract. An example of this might be do not accept checks. If you're going to be collecting insurance for the customer, you can do so in the next tab, or if you want to decline, you can just simply click the blocks, and then you can continue to the billing details screen. The billing details screen is probably the most important part of setting up an existing contract, so I just want to start with the contact information in the upper left. Basically, if you don't have this information, feel free to leave it blank, but if you do, you can start gathering the contact category, the contact source, and the reason for renting. Again, if you don't have this information, feel free to leave it blank and just continue on. The next thing we're going to want to change is the move-in date. You can do so by selecting the arrow, which brings up a drop-down menu. From here, you can simply select which the appropriate date is for the customer's move-in date, and you can continue to the actual rate of the rental. This you can modify, but it will always bring up the default street value for the particular unit that you bring up. Next you can select the billing plan, and for this I'm just going to still keep it at storage and RV. And the pay on date can be modified to whichever date that you want, but I do want to note that whenever you change this move in date, it's automatically going to change that pay on date for you as well. So be careful when switching them. The next section that we're going to be taking a look at is the initial balances. I'm going to be going over some other circumstances in future videos, such as customers with a past due amount or a customer with a credit on his account. But for this particular example, I'm going to say that Brandon Carraway is a current customer and currently has a $0 balance on his account. So in this particular example, we don't have to put anything into the initial balances and we can just continue on. The three fields underneath the initial balances are basically setting up the customer's status. Since our customer is currently current on his payments, you can see that he is in no late step, his delinquency is current, and his status is that he's not overlocked currently. These will be changed and actually shown in the future videos as well, so for now we can actually continue to the fees, deposits, and discounts. These fields are going to be applying anything that might be pertaining to this particular contract that is carried over from the previous software. 
The most common one you'll probably be putting in is discounts. And from here you can see anything that might be reoccurring that might want to carry over, such as the first three months 10% off. All you have to do is simply click add and you can see it automatically applies to that contract. That is the last step of setting up a current customer. So once you're done with that, all you have to do is select finish. And it says there's no balance entries because there is a zero dollar balance. And would you like to enter amounts for that? No. <laughs> Since it's a current customer, we can select no and it'll continue through processing this particular customer. Once it's done, it's going to prompt you and ask you if you want to create another contract. If you do so, you'll be prompted to go through the same exact process that we just went through. If you're finished inputting your current contracts for now, you can simply select no and it'll bring you to your original screen. This will conclude our brief beginner tutorial on setting up an existing contract with a zero dollar balance. For future videos, please visit our website or subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you.